Welcome to this tutorial in the Mongoose Fundamentals video training series. In this tutorial, we will be talking about the Mongoose user interface and its various sections, the importance of forms and various ways to open them, and about the Mongoose Explorer and how it can be used to open forms in various ways. The first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is take a quick tour of the basic Mongoose user interface. Much of this is straightforward, but there are some unique productivity features to learn. If you recall, in an earlier tutorial we talked about Mongoose's three-tiered architecture, with the databases providing the foundation, the Windows or web client providing the user interface via forms, and the IDEO layer providing the middleman operational functionality. In this tutorial, we are going to zero in on the client tier where you interact with the data in Mongoose. As mentioned in that earlier tutorial, the Mongoose client where users interact with the data in Mongoose comes in a couple different basic flavors, if you will. First is the Windows-based smart client, known as WinStudio. Note that although typically run as a standalone program, WinStudio can also be hosted inside the Internet Explorer browser on Windows. Then there is the HTML5 web client, which, if you remember, does not include the design mode. The HTML5 client also provides a form-only mode that allows any Mongoose form to be presented to the user as a standalone web page. This is useful for consumer interfaces that require no training, where end users will not be expected to understand things like the Mongoose menu system. For example, if you are building a web portal or building pages for your users to access on their smartphones, you can build forms to use as pages using this form-only mode. And for completeness, we should mention that there is an additional lightweight version of the HTML5 web client that disables some of the CSS processing and removes some formatting options. This allows for increased performance on older, less capable smartphone browsers. For the remainder of this series, we will be using mostly the WinStudio Smart Client, but later on in this series we will also be designing a web portal which will use the HTML5 Client form-only mode. On opening a new unmodified instance of Mongoose for the first time, you should see something like this. Let's take a quick tour of what we see here, noting before we do that some of these features look slightly different or are not available in the web client versions, even aside from design mode. The Mongoose user interface can be broken down into five basic areas. The title bar at the top shows both the name of the application you are using and what configuration you are logged into. On the other side are the standard windows minimize, maximize, and quit buttons. Just below the title bar is the menu bar. The initial view, as you see it here, includes only the system menu, the master explorer menu, and the my folders menu. But we hasten to point out that the display of menus and the order they display in is pretty changeable. They depend on your personal user preferences, what theme you are using, and other factors. In fact, we are going to see a couple examples of alternate menu arrangements in the next tutorial. Just below the menu bar are the toolbars. Toolbars, did we say? Yep. What we see here is the main toolbar, which always displays unless you tell Mongoose not to. But in design mode, there is a second toolbar that displays, containing options pertinent only to form development activities. Like most applications, the toolbar consists of a series of icons that allow you to perform many operations by clicking them. Many icons duplicate options that are available on one of the menus. And, like the menus also, the display of icons depends to some extent on what is going on in the workspace. Some icons only display when certain forms are open, for instance. And, in case you forget what a particular icon does, you can hover over it with a mouse pointer and a tooltip to help you displays. The largest area of the user interface is what we call the workspace. This is the space in which you will do most of your work. It is where forms display and in design mode it is also where additional sets of tools display. And again, what displays here depends to a great extent on what you are actually doing or trying to do, 
what mode you are in, whether runtime mode or design mode, and on other factors. Finally, at the bottom of the user interface we have the status bar. The left side of this space is used to display information about what component or field is active, what record within a collection you are looking at, and other information about the form you are working in, such as whether it is linked to another form, and if so, what form. In previous tutorials, and earlier in this tutorial, we have spoken about forms in passing. The time has come to take a closer look at what we've been talking about. Just as document files are what you work with and produce in Microsoft Word, just as workbooks and worksheets are what you work with and produce in a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel, forms are what you work with and produce in Mongoose. Forms provide the basis of most operations and activities in a Mongoose application. Forms provide a way for users to interact with and use the data in the databases. Although you can design forms with any combination of the various form components Mongoose provides, creating layouts any way you wish, Mongoose provides a quick start for some basic types of layouts, and many of the forms you will use in Mongoose development and administration fall into one of these categories. So, let's briefly look at them. Without a doubt, the most commonly used type of form in Mongoose is the multi-view form. In some ways, this is the most complex type of form, but it is also, in many ways, the most versatile. The multi-view form typically includes two views of the data, separated by a splitter bar. The left side contains the grid view, which allows you to view all the records in the current collection. The records are presented in a spreadsheet-like grid. This view is convenient for scanning through records when you are looking for a particular one and for getting a high-level summary kind of view of the collection. The right side of the multi-view form, then, displays the detail view. This is typically a detailed view of whichever record is selected in the grid view. This is also usually where the user interacts with and makes changes to the data. You can move the splitter bar if you want to whatever position you like. You can also hide one view or the other temporarily. As you might guess from its name, the grid-only form displays the data for a collection only using a grid. This is like the grid view of the multi-view form without the detail view. Grid-only forms are typically used to define and display related groups of values, settings, parameters, or codes. The collections they display are usually small with a limited amount of data. Again, as you might guess, the detail-only form then presents a detail view of only one record at a time from a collection, like the detail view of a multi-view form. The limitation and potential drawback of creating this type of form is exactly that you can only view a single record from the collection at a time. Because there is no accompanying grid view, the only way to navigate through the records in the collection is either with the navigation buttons on the main toolbar or by setting components on the form itself to provide the navigation options. One major advantage to using this type of form, though, is that it can be used more easily by users with little or no WinStudio experience, especially in a web client situation on a mobile device. Query forms allow users to create a filter to specify and narrow down the number of records that are returned from a collection. The filter can be temporary, existing only as long as the query form is open, or it can be saved by the user to be used again. Query forms are typically split horizontally into two panes. The upper pane contains tabs for primary criteria and additional criteria. The lower pane displays the returned results set in a grid. Query forms are typically created in association with a particular form or component, usually at the time the form is created, though they can be added or reassigned later. The results set displayed on the query form can then be returned to the calling form or the calling component. The results set becomes the current collection in the calling form. A selected item in the results set becomes the current item or current component value. When you want to build a form completely from the ground up, 
That is a form that does not conform to any of the standard other types of forms generated by the form wizards, then use the build from scratch form type. This type of form is created blank, without any defined components or associated IDO collections. You must then create and define each component you want on the form yourself. A tile is a specific type of form, which can be bound to a single collection within another form. Tiles are used to display key information in a compact way and offer other unique functionality. Essentially, tiles are special embedded forms, not standalone forms, with limited capabilities. To learn more about them, check out the online help. Okay, well, we have talked quite a bit about opening or running forms, but exactly how do we do that? The answer, it turns out, is not quite as simple and straightforward as it might seem. Why? Because there are actually many ways to access forms in Mongoose. It usually depends on what form you are looking for and how often you use a form. We actually saw one way to open a form in the previous tutorial, if you recall. In that case, we opened the user's form by clicking the Open a Form icon on the main toolbar. That opened the Select Form dialog box, which then gave us the means to locate and open the form we wanted. Well, it turns out that there are a couple other ways to open a form by way of the Select Form dialog box. You can start with the System menu and then select the Form menu option and then its Open option. Or you can simply use the keyboard shortcut, Control o Notice that these three methods actually highlight the basic ways you can do many things in Mongoose. You can either select and click a toolbar icon, or you can use the menus, or you can simply use a keyboard shortcut, which is often the most efficient way once you learn what the keyboard shortcuts are in Mongoose. Okay then, once we have the Select Form dialog box open, you might have already noticed that there are a whole lot of forms in there. Fortunately, there are a few different ways we can go about locating the form we want. Now we can do what we did in the previous tutorial and simply scroll down the list until we locate the one we want. Since they are listed alphabetically, this is actually pretty convenient. If you look just below the form list, you will see a checkbox labeled Select by Name instead of Caption. By default, this option is not selected. Since we will be developing new forms, and they might not have captions until we are done with them, we will select that option now. That allows us to easily get to our forms using the keyboard, even if they do not have translatable captions created for them yet. You will find that often the quickest way to run forms is to press Control o and then start typing the name of the form you want. The system navigates to it, and then you can press Enter to run it. If neither of those methods appeals to you, there is a third option. The Select Form dialog box also provides a filtering option. If you look towards the bottom of that dialog box, you will see a field labeled All Containing. Let's say you know just part of the form name, but not the whole name. For example, you might know that it has the word background as part of the form name. In this case, you could type the word background into this field. Mongoose then automatically filters out all forms except those with the word background in the name. You can then select the one you want from the list and click OK. Well, as if that were not enough ways to open a form, there are other methods available. One of the most popular methods, which is common to many Windows applications, is the most recently used list. In Mongoose, this list appears on the Form menu and lists the 10 most recently used forms. So, if you want to reopen a form that you know you have opened recently, you can simply go to the Form menu and locate the form you want in the numbered list at the bottom of that menu. Alright then, we've given you quite a bit of information. Now we'd like to give you the chance to practice what you've learned. This set of exercises is designed to help you learn and review several of the ways to open forms in Mongoose.
Finally, the Mongoose Explorer, which we have mentioned in passing, also provides options to locate and open forms. You can use the Explorer to access your most frequently used forms, have forms open automatically when you sign into Mongoose, preload but not open forms so that they open more quickly, or browse all the forms in Mongoose, either by name or by the modules to which they belong. The Master Explorer, which is available from a menu, presents a tree structure or hierarchical view of all the forms in the system. By default, this menu is at the top of the user interface for Mongoose, but we will look at some other options later. Initially, any new forms you create will not appear in the Master Explorer, but if you have vendor developer editing permissions, you can add your new forms to the Master Explorer, and we recommend that you do so before selling or redistributing your final application. Let's take a quick look at how we can locate and open our old friend, the Users Form, using the Master Explorer. We start with the Master Explorer menu. You'll notice that when we look at this menu, there really is only one menu option, Modules. Pin is a display option, not a menu option. Then, when we select that option, again, there is only one menu option, System. That is because out of the box, these are the only options available. However, when you create your own Mongoose-based applications and add their contents to the Master Explorer, you can add to both of these menus as appropriate for your application. Looking at the System submenu, then, we see that the System module contains a number of submodules and a number of forms that do not belong to any submodule. If you know the kind of form you are looking for, but you have no idea of the form's name, this can be an excellent tool to help you find it. Now, we know this is a bit of a silly example, but suppose that you know there is a form that you can use to create user IDs, but you can't remember the name of the form. You would drill down to this level, and then scanning the list, you decide it is probably in the User Management submodule. So you look there, and sure enough, there it is, and it is named simply Users. Click the form name, and it opens. The Master Explorer is most useful when you are looking for a form that you rarely use and you can't remember the name of. But what about the forms that you use frequently and want to have readily available? Mongoose provides a few options for these kinds of situations. The answer is on the My Folders menu. On initial installation and configuration of Mongoose, this is the third menu at the top of the user interface. The My Folders menu provides a few really handy options that you might want to make use of. The first option is the ability to create your own form shortcuts as menu items in My Folders. This can be a very useful option for forms that you use frequently. However, we cannot create these shortcuts with the current configuration of the user interface, so we cannot yet demonstrate how to create these shortcuts. We promise to come back to it in a future tutorial, though. You will notice when we expand the My Folders menu that there are currently two options on this menu, the Auto Run option and the Preload option. The Auto Run option allows you to designate any forms that you want Mongoose to open automatically anytime you sign in. Let's say, for instance, that you work with the Users form nearly every day, so you just want Mongoose to have it open and available whenever you sign in. You can create an entry for that form on the Auto Run submenu using a procedure very much like creating a form shortcut. The next time you sign in to Mongoose then, you can marvel as Mongoose opens the form without you having to do a thing. The preload option is somewhat similar to the auto run option, but it does not actually open the form when you sign in. It simply preloads the form metadata into the system cache so that you can open it more quickly when you are ready for it. We will have much more to say and show you about the Mongoose Explorer functionality in a future tutorial, but this should be enough for now. Before you do the next tutorial, we recommend that you spend some time in the Mongoose user interface, learning how things work, opening forms, and exploring the Mongoose Explorer menus. 
Looking back then, in this tutorial, we took a quick tour of the Mongoose user interface and briefly explained the various sections. We talked about the importance of forms and the various ways to open them. And we spent some time learning about the Mongoose Explorer and how it can be used to open forms in various ways. So what's next? In the next tutorial in this series, we will learn about how to set various key user preferences in Mongoose that will make your job easier as a Mongoose form and application developer. We will also be taking a solid look at themes and how they work in Mongoose. For more information, including more tutorials and complete documentation, visit our Mongoose portal at https colon slash slash mongoose.infor.com slash portal. For technical support, visit the Infor Extreme support website at https colon slash slash www.inforextreme.com and log an incident there. Or feel free to contact us with your questions and comments at mongooseatinfor.com. That's it for this tutorial. Until next time then, have a great Mongoose Day!